Fuji's photography philosophy is not the same as other manufacturers, and that difference is evident as soon as you pick up the Fuji X70. Other cameras have a mode dial, not here. Instead, set the shutter speed using this top dial, the aperture using the ring around the lens. But don't be intimidated. You can leave one or both on A to have the camera adjust the setting automatically. Then flip this switch to Auto for the full-on SR, think scene recognition, auto mode. I'm never sure how much this helps, but at the bottom of the screen it identifies scenes like landscapes, portraits, macro. While the styling is not as retro as some Fuji cameras, these physical controls really invite you to get involved. It is retro Euro rangefinder enough to feature an integrated fixed focal length lens, the equivalent of 28 millimeters, with an aperture that opens to f2.8, but not a viewfinder. Having just been to the Art Gallery of Ontario's Outsider exhibit, featuring photos by Gary Winograd, I was inspired to go streeting. That meant black and white, and Fuji offers more ways to take monochromatic images than most. The film emulations, in addition to color modes Provia, the standard, Velvia, the vivid, Astia, the soft, Chrome, the calm, if that's a photo term, and negative, there are four black and white modes, five if you include sepia. I chose R, enhanced contrast and darker skies. Without a viewfinder, tilting the LCD and looking down works, but pretty sure Winograd shot wild, getting some interesting angles and capturing a certain street energy. The shutter's nicely quiet, allowing for a degree of inconspicuousness. Touchscreen focus and snap isn't particularly inconspicuous, but I find it an extraordinarily interesting and useful feature to have. What I do feel is a certain shutter lagginess. It's not as fast as I'd like, so I'm adapting a little bit by anticipating. It's worth mentioning that the film simulation settings affect only JPEG files, so shooting RAW Plus saves a full color RAW file. That's a flexibility I like, and recovering highlights from RAW files is always a bonus. Either way, image quality is excellent, exactly what you'd expect from Fuji. Crisp and detailed, rich, accurate colors, nice contrast in a wide range of settings. The X70 really looks and feels like a miniature camera. From the dials to the grips, I find everything is smallish, so while I appreciate the size, sometimes making an adjustment is a little awkward. A fixed lens with a fixed focal length seems limited, but it does encourage creativity. And on tab 5, there are digital telesettings for 35 and 50 millimeter equivalents, but not if you're shooting raw. Additionally, Fuji sells a wide angle adapter. There's a flash shoe and a tiny built in on the front. The articulated LCD swings all the way up for selfies and down. In selfie mode, Face detection and eye autofocus are automatically selected. HDMI and USB ports, as well as a micro, smaller than the usual mini, audio input. HDMI out works only for playback. The control set on the back is pretty standard, with the interesting command controller, which can be pressed right and left to change options in the quick menu, or pushed to select manual focus assist modes takes a little getting used to. Three displays, with and without information, and a status-only screen, which would be perfect if there was a viewfinder. The well-hidden display customization screen, Setup tab 1 screen setup, last option, display custom setting, enables framing guidelines, an electronic level, a histogram, but can also be used to remove irrelevant icons. The level is horizontal only. The right side of the screen has a toggle for the three touch modes, focus, focus and shoot, or off. Touch can be completely disabled on setup tab 2. I think Winograd would have liked the Wi-Fi, which enables both image transfer and remote control using the free Fuji smartphone app, or maybe he would have just taken photos with his phone. This is the iPad version, send photos to the device from the camera or browse the photos on the camera and select which to transfer. Remote control can shoot video or stills, 
adjust options, including film simulation, adjust shutter speed or aperture, and take photos using touch to focus and snap. Nice. Then use playback to select and transfer the images. Although within the remote mode, changing from shooting to transfer is possible, it's a little frustrating that changing to other modes drops the connection, which means restarting the Wi-Fi, changing the networks on the device again before selecting a different mode. Geotagging transfers location information from the device to the camera. You'll want to rerun this each time you change locations. If you have a Fuji Share printer, you can connect the X70 directly for instant prints, select your photo, then on tab 2, select Instax Printer. Fuji has upped their focus game. The selector on the front sets single, continuous, or manual. Manual isn't available with the Auto SR mode. Closest focus distance is 10 cm, covering about a 10 cm horizontal distance. Focus isn't the fastest, but it is generally accurate, although in dark situations it sometimes needs a little encouragement to get it right. Three modes, single point, zone, and wide. In continuous, wide mode will track the subject. Press the selector down button to set the size and position of the focus point, the command controller for size, the selector dial for position. In zone, the area is larger and has several configurations. In manual focus, the AFL button works as autofocus. That's handy if you don't want focus and shutter to be interlocked. This button can be customized, tab 4, locking exposure, focus, or both. And the action can be set as hold while it's pressed, or toggle, press once to lock, press again to release. I find that useful. There are several assists for manual focus, an on-screen distance guide, which is absolutely tiny, but provides a depth of field guide. Notice that the blue strip gets longer as I decrease the aperture. I find the focus ring a little close to the body to get a nice grip. Use the command controller for an expanded view and slide it right or left for more magnifications. Press it for the two alternate focus assist modes, digital split image or focus peaking where focus edges appear. Menu tab 4 has the peaking color and level options. Aperture ranges from 2.8 to 16, shutter from bulb to 1 4000th with the mechanical shutter, switch to electronic or combined, and use the command controller to go out to 1 over 32,000. The EV dial setting at the bottom of the screen turns into a meter when aperture, shutter, and ISO are in manual mode. Manual mode disables the EV dial. It would be nice if it adjusted ISO, which otherwise requires the quick menu. Of course, Winograd would have had to switch film, so I shouldn't complain. ISO can be set from 200 to 6400. An extended ISO offers up to 51.2. What I like best is auto ISO which enables me to select manual shutter and aperture and let the ISO get the exposure right and then fine tune using the EV dial three steps up and down. Images taken at 6400 ISO turned out better than I anticipated. There are three auto ISO settings configured on menu tab 1 which provide the ability to fine tune the operational range for each, set the base ISO, the maximum ISO, and the minimum shutter speed. Then select the one you want to use using the Q menu. Press the Drive button to access Drive, Still, High and Low Burst, Bracket options including Exposure, ISO, Film Simulation, White Balance and Dynamic Range, as well as Panorama, Multiple Exposure, and the Advanced Filters a fairly standard selection of effects. This feature is so hidden it's nearly an Easter egg. Dynamic range and exposure bracket take multiple images. The remainder work from a single exposure. Use tab 5 to customize the selection for the film simulation bracket. The main menu is context sensitive to shooting and playback modes and the first option changes depending on mode. When advanced filter is selected Choose the option here. In SR Auto, select the scene here. 
Most shooting settings can be adjusted using the Q menu. Nested on Setup tab 2 under Button Dial Settings, these 16 slots can be customized to reorganize or select from the 27 available parameters. The 8 Fun Keys can also be customized, 23 selections. Don't overlook the Hidden Key on the left side. By default, it selects the function of the lens control ring. The menu dims and skips over non-available options. I'd find it useful to have a little help to understand that digital teleconvert isn't available when RAW is selected. Of course, there is a chart in the back of the manual. The intervalometer set the interval and up to 999 images and a start time. It saves images at the current resolution, so for time-lapse movie, it's up to you to create that in post and it may not be able to quite keep up with one image per second. Movie mode turns out to be a bit of an afterthought. Although what's here works well, particularly as you can record video with the film emulations like Chrome and Black and White. Just press the video button to record. Shutter, aperture, and EV can all be adjusted while recording. 1080 and 720 available in NTSC, PAL, and cinema frame rates from 24 to 60. Movie ISO is independent and set here in the menu. There's a four-step audio level adjustment. The meter is useful, but doesn't appear while you're recording. Battery life is better than average. The power adapter is included to charge the battery via USB. The X70 can also be powered from the USB port. Cameras this small may have 16 megapixel sensors, but they're not APS-C sized. That's a big advantage if you're going for a defocused background or shooting in low light. I'm a big fan of physical controls. They're much easier to check and set than virtual. But if that doesn't sell you, touch to focus and shoot should. Small enough to travel easily, this compact camera packs full-size, well, APS-C size anyway, capabilities.